there's nothing more satisfying, more gratifying than to be soaring through the air and to feel the wind passing your, your face and passing your ears and, and to have a moment where you can sustain for a split second in the air. It is our function to make the difficult look easy, to make the unnatural look natural. But there still remains this stigma about being a male in all of this stuff. I grew up in Bayside, Queens, uh, which was not the place where too many guys wore tights. Around 1945, my mother was taking my sister to a local ballet school in Queens. Uh, I used to hang out in the streets and do what I did best, and that was get into physical trouble, being a feisty, physical young kid. Uh, indeed, that's what I did. Uh, one day, I got knocked unconscious by a baseball while my mother was away with my sister at this local school. My mother got very upset and said, that's it, we can't trust you anymore. From now on, you are coming with us. And I got dragged kicking and screaming to my sister's school. I had to sit and watch 40 giggling girls, their mothers and me, until I started to jump. And now that somehow interested me. So I walked to the back and I tried some of this stuff. I found I could do it. And not only could I do it, I was doing it better than the young ladies. Uh, and naturally, I started to make fun of it. I disrupted the class. I got a dirty look from the teacher. I thought I was in trouble. Indeed, I was, because the next day I was standing in tights at the bar, uh, the teacher saying, there is no way that I could stay there unless I was in tights at the bar. So that's how I began uh, to be a ballet dancer. As time went by, I, I played further satellite athletics, but I also won letters in baseball in high school and college. I was welterweight boxing champion in college. I have always been a very, very physical individual. And I participated in many, many kinds of physical activities, but none like the world of classical dance. There's nothing like throwing yourself across the stage and seemingly total abandon and, and feeling a sense of abandon, but at the same time have total and complete control. <laughs> To be dealing with uh, music, to be dealing with style, with period, a, a characterization, the theatrics, the dramatics of it, and the audience. To be able to speak to an audience with your body, uh, to speak that language and have it understood and appreciated by an audience, uh, I have never ever been more totally alive than those moments being on stage. George Balanchine, of course, my, my boss and mentor at the New York City Ballet, is probably the single greatest choreographer in the history of dance. But beyond that, he was an extraordinary human being. And he certainly controlled his art. He put a new face on the world of classical dance. He took us from the 19th century, from 19th century uh, romanticism, traditional kinds of ways. He took us into a new, fresher, cleaner, clearer, unadorned 20th century. He was a man who also said uh, that ballet is woman, and he even said to me at one point that men really were porters. What we did was we carried and presented women. But by the same token, he made probably the single greatest set of variations in the male repertoire. <laughs> Blinkiana was uh, a work that George Balanchine did for me, um, and it, it was a work that I could, I could dance in, in terms of the, the technical challenges, but the style, the manner, the quality, there was a restraint about it, there was a holding back. And I was uh, normally a, a different kind of dancer. I, I came straight at you, I was brash. There was a certain arrogance about, about my attack. I had a very kind of athletic attack. I had a pyrotechnical ability. Uh, I, I had a, a fire within me that I, I just needed to use all the time. So to pull back and be somewhat more lyric was one of the major challenges I had as a dancer or as an attempt 
to be an artist. Classical dancing is, is considerably more demanding and, and probably physically uh, uh, exhausting than, than any other kind of physicality I've, I've ever been involved in. On one particular matinee where I had a full load, I had Tarantella on the matinee, plus I had the ruby section of jewels in the evening, uh, Jacques Amboise was injured and I had to replace him in Raimonda variations. And uh, after I danced Tarantella, I stepped out on stage to do Raimonda, finished the pas de deux, went to do my first solo, and my muscles began to spasm. And I eventually just collapsed on stage and literally had to crawl off. And uh, I got muscle spasms in both sides. And they, you know, you straighten your leg like this and it catches. And then you land and you land on a straight leg. The muscles just lock. Things speak to me. And then the question was, was I going to be able to do rubies that evening? And I had an understudy, but he had never really learned the role. Plus, he was already dancing in the corps de ballet. So the question was, what would happen if indeed I tried to do this work and I collapsed again on stage? became a huge dramatic moment. Would I or wouldn't I get through this thing? And I, I, I plunged in and, and I did it. And I'm happy I did it. And I'm happy that nothing uh, um, obtuse occurred. I'm the proud possessor, or not so proud possessor of nine broken toes, stress fractures in both legs. I have a knee operation. I've got uh, two herniated discs. I have a hip replacement. I have all of those things. This is a very, very serious physical occupation and inflammation and pain become your partner. They become almost good friends. But that was the kind of, of passion that one had about the work. It is exhilarating. It is about passion. It is romantic. It's all of those cliches. And that's why it is so fantastic and so wonderful, because it is a series of truisms.